everyone, I'm Bill. I'm with Kalimoto TV. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to Turtle Rock. How odd that Dave Moss is here on location. Wow. And uh, thank you, Dave, for uh, coming out for a special trip uh, to get the all new 2021 RS660 tuned finally. The rear shock on my big butt is uh, bottoming out pretty good. So uh, Dave already started to tear into this thing because you had a suspicion, right? He, he uh, went down there and look what we are already into. We had to get the rear seat off in order to get the front seat off, in order to get the side off, in order to get in there for rebound. Correct. Rebound adjustment. Thank you, Aprilia, for your amazing engineering. And I was just thinking this morning how well this bike has been put together until now. Well, I don't know. But uh, I, I guess... We just need a small uh, hole. A nice long screwdriver. So without further ado, I'm going to let D Dave do his work and um, get to tuning this thing because, well, we'll see. So, so in checking static sag, we have a little bit. So static is up, right? Up the bike under its own weight. Okay. So if we push it down. Yes. And lift it. Okay. Now the other little part bit. that that camera will show is the back of the bike double bounces. Yes. Almost yes. three times actually. Yes. So as you're decelerating, it's push. And then- it's Kind of slinging me up. And then settles. Okay. So corner entry, as soon as you decelerate is destable. Okay. Or unstable. Okay. And at that point, the rebound adjust is way off. All right. So the first thing is, where are we? Let's have a look. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven clicks out of 14. So we're halfway. All right. Because we know rebounds too fast and we're going to change the spring tension. We have 14 clicks of rebound total. So I'm going to bring it back from seven to four. So we have more one, two, three, four. Okay. Now we've got to go ahead, put the seat on real quick. In doing that, we're going to measure sag with Bill on the bike, see where we are numerically and how much we need to change it. But before we do that, let's switch to the tire. See how lumpy this is? Yep. That's all from rebound when you're on the side of the tire, okay. stressing the joint. Got it. And okay. already, yep. that edge is rounded right down and that edge is super sharp and actually yep. getting an edge on it. Yep. So what we see is reinforced by the wear on the tire. So that's all good. Okay. So at this point, let's see where we have to go with preload. So we'll get the tape measure out and we'll see what we got for sag. So quick question on the four clicks. Is four clicks based on you knowing my size or is four clicks just a baseline start? All that is, is when I measure you and retention the spring, mm -hmm. it is an absolute guess. Okay. Because we haven't pushed on it since I changed from seven to four. Yes, correct. So I'm making an executive decision okay. based on changing the preload. What I don't want to do is if we have to add it all and take all the static sag away, okay. now I have to over damp so you don't get booted mid corner and pop. Got it, okay. And we want to straighten out this line here on the tire and make sure that follows the circumference perfectly straight and doesn't so, wobble. So kind of a halfway there is about a good start. Okay. But if we have to run, and, and if we do run out of static sag in the back, the spring purchase is urgent. But will we run out of rebound first? And if we do, then a shock purchase is urgent. And Nitron USA is in a rush to get one of these shocks to build their own. Okay. So we've got to see where we're at first. Okay. And then we'll go from there decision wise. All right. All right. So. Let's get you on the bike and do some measuring. All right. Okay, so I'm going to measure to the tip to the R, and that is 550 mil. All right, take a seat. Okay. Okay, stay still. Mm -hmm. 550. 
to five five twenty four. Okay. So you're at twenty six rear sag right now. Okay. So off you get. Okay. Numerically, that's tight. Okay. In reality, so that soft spring is already crunched a lot, which is why it's kicking and why there's so little sag in it. Got it. All right. So we know that spring's got to go sooner right. rather than later. Yes. Because as, as I break it in more, especially for my size, as I break it in more, that's going to become tighter and tighter, which means that it's going to become... So as you break the shock in... Yes. The shock or spring. Sorry. The if, as you break the shock in, yes. because this is a gas oil shock okay. with a rebound adjuster, as the oil degrades, it gets thinner. Okay. So the shock movement becomes faster. Got it. Given your weight, numerically, we're in the 20s for sag, which is race bike sag. But you are bottoming everything out. So if that is... What are you saying? Case, <laughs> because you're riding it through yeah. the corners and it's yeah. bottoming in the corner. Yep. So because of that soft spring already wound a ton of preload on rebound going all the way in to compensate for that super tight spring got it that's soft okay so we'd need to take the spring off understand what the rate is mm -hmm. and then see do we need to go one step or two steps higher to get the right spring for you with that shock okay if we go with a stiffer spring what's going to happen to that rebound in the shock yep okay it's going to go it's going to be faster because the spring is stronger right so then do we run out of rebound with a brand new spring with a brand new shock got it just because of ability and weight combined so okay let's change that let's get the pre uh, static sag down to a minimum see what we need for rebound and then we'll go to the front okay So there's a lot of thread left on the shock. Yes. Which is good for adjustability. But if we go too far and lose all the static sag, then it's gonna be a really rough ride for you. So you are you are um, loosening the spring. Incorrect. I'm okay. I'm making it shorter. Shorter, okay. So as I turn it in a clockwise direction. Yes. Then we're adding preload because you're bottoming out. Got it, okay. So. I visioned, for some reason, I visioned it going the other way. Because okay. that's okay. Yep. Got it, okay. Because there's six castle nuts. Yes. Per half. Yes. So I, in counting the castle nuts, I know now I've done a full turn. Okay. So let's check static so you can look right in there. Set it. And lift it. So we still have some left. Okay. So we'll go another turn. So six nuts, six little spaces. So it's you're a turn. is a half a turn. Got it. All right. So you are you are one two full turns of that. Yeah. Top. Okay. And we're still we've still got static. Now okay. the key is when I push on it, does it bounce back or how much it bounce back? But can I bottom it by hand? Ah. Uh, right. Yes. Because that's what you're feeling. Yes. And I can feel it by hand. It doesn't jump anymore, and it comes up much yep. slow, much more. Slowly. Yeah, I see the, I see the, I see the rear kind of coming up slower. Right. Okay. So we were at four. Let's okay. take a look at three. Let's put one more in. Get the screw on the right place. There it is. Okay. All right. Now let's see what we got again for rebound. That's much better. And oh, much slower, huh? Well, 
this screw may not just be doing rebound, it may be doing oil flow. Okay. Of rebound and compression. Okay. As we pull that out at seven, you can push it straight to the bottom. Okay. Now at three out, I can't. Yes. It's dramatically stiffer. Way stiffer, okay. But we only have three, two, one, done. So we're three left. We've got three left. Okay. We still have a tiny bit of static. Okay. We could afford to go another half a turn, but before we do that, okay. you're gonna go test ride it. Okay. And we will see where you're at and what you think. And if you felt it bottom, if it didn't okay. bottom, we'll go ahead and put another half a turn in cause you just started riding this okay. and you're gonna ride it faster. So we've got actually about 500 miles on it. So yeah. I've got a few miles on it, yeah. but, um, and, and so you're saying half a turn on the... I'm gonna put half a turn more on the shock spring yep. and call it. Because that's at that it. point we need some static. Okay, got it. So that's the maximum. Okay. The question now becomes, and that's the beauty of being at Turtle Rock, you can go up the top of go the up. hill <laughs> that's and it. ride it and yep. come back and did it bottom. Yep. Because there's some great compression G outs going up. Hill. Yes. Yes. Downhill is a different story, but as you decel, you won't pop forward yep. into the corner. So yep. your ability to initiate will go way deeper in the corner than it did on the way up here. Got it. The problem is on the way up here, apart from by the dam where it's nice and tight, everything's yep. open. It's really kind of flat, essentially. Yeah, but here, up and tight, yep. with some of the corners being 70, 80 miles an hour, Yep. then that flickability plus stability okay. should make it way easier to ride. Okay, perfect. So next thing. Okay. We need to know how much is expanded here. And then we'll do, while you're off riding, I'll see if there's any data on the bike for maximum travel. Extended is 140. Okay, so at that point we need to see, or find out where maximum travel is and find our little black dot here. So I'll see if I can find that out while you ride. We know what that is. So go ahead, take a seat okay. and let's, uh, let's remeasure. What's your weight these days? 245, okay. with gear. All right, all right. I need you on the bike, so that can sit right there. Hold the brake, push down on the front twice. One, two, that's good. So 140, and with you on the bike? Sorry. That's all right. 95. So we got 45 in the front total. So 40, 80, 120. So that's reasonable. Okay. Okay. Off you get. Now, from what I've from what I've gathered from uh, out at Coda, and the member, because remember I texted you when I was yeah. at Coda, the guy said basically the rear is where it is. That's just it. But I'm assuming I'm assuming the reason why he said that is because of the it's the too hard to get the, to the compression rebound rebound. Well, uh, it's, the, the placed, it's placed as a rebound adjuster yes. at the other end of the shot. Got it. But it's clearly, as we screw it in, the shot gets harder as well and rebound slows down. So, so it's, it's a, a damping, it's damping. A damping okay. screw. So I'm assuming that's why he, he really actually said the front end was good. So, um, so okay. All right. <laughs> so if you look at the front, the tread is high and then it goes down and then the okay compound wear is yep. up high right so we've got all these down oh, lines got it yep and on the edge here super rounded in fi yep. 500 miles yep so your front end oh, and, and, is, and a little bit of a lip right yeah front ends bouncing all over the place as far as the tire shows plus big deformation on the soft compound joint okay question is was that because of that okay pinging everything forward the front being stable going no and sending it back so that's just like ripples on a pond right hits a wall and comes back off so we've got to see is if rebound is good with the damping setting mm -hmm. at that point this wear is all from the shock not the front so it's funny because bog always says i can ride a wheelbarrow 
I, you know, so let me grab you guys real quick. So I don't know if Dave remembers, but in 2007, probably around May 2007, was the very first time I ever had my suspension adjusted. And it was by this man. And I, to this day, I will say, it's the best, cheapest mod you can do, getting your suspension tuned. Um, I, I don't think there's not a, been a bike that you really haven't touched of mine. You've everything, uh, everything in the garage. It's sure. maybe M MT-03, but that, that doesn't count. And your track bikes. Yeah, every track bike, every street yeah. bike, everything. It's the cheapest, best mod. And look, I honestly, I felt really actually good on the bike the last couple of days. As you guys saw the riding videos, the, the bonus videos, people were like, am I riding in kilometers? Cause <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. no, it's miles per hour. Um, but Gina. man, I'm excited. Oh, man. I'm super excited. So, all right. So let's have a look at the way the front pole goes or doesn't. And we're looking for down, up, and stop. Okay. So that's a fail, because we get the second yep. bounce. Yep. So the wear on the front tire is correct based on the settings. So let's see where we are, Bill, on our right. adjusters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 19. Woo. Eighteen, close enough. Okay. Of twenty-one. So the so, really good news is <laughs> you're a million miles out on damping, which is awesome because as the oil ages, depending where we finish up, we can get. You could keep going. Got it. Okay. So that's awesome. So the front looks. You so you said it's eighteen. 18 and 19 of 21. One. So, right. which means adjustability. Yeah. So now we'll go to 15. Okay. Ooh. And that's perfect. Let's come back to 16. Okay. So, so this, I'm learning, I'm learning, Dave, over all these years. So now, we're, we're gonna look for the bounce, the second bounce, right? right? And then you get one more and then it should be good? Well, a kind of. we know 16 was good. Okay. We're gonna try 17 and see if it fails. Got it. So one click is the difference between sweat, grip, fatigue, and complete stability. So crazy, all right. Fail. Yep. Let's put it back so to 16. One click. One click. Perfect. Just, it just, I, I, just amazing. <laughs> so the other part is, we know at 16 for maximum, you have a ton of room to go over time. So as the oil breaks down, you can keep going. Mm -hmm. That's where the shock is extremely disappointing because we're gonna rapidly lose damping in the shock to the point that it doesn't work anymore. And given your ability and weight, that might be at 800 miles, it might be at, 1800 miles but and then it's done and then that starts to affect the front again because yep all right it's it's all making sense now yeah so the part here is stability is everything because we only have two wheels this no bueno yep unless you like a beating in which case keep that at home yep. because that's fine it's personal yep but not on the bike okay and we want the bike now you did the little seesaw with the with the the screwdriver we want the we want the screwdriver to be working to get so you, i think you showed me can we do it I, I, I he's reading my mind because he showed me this a couple years ago and it blew my mind to see this so watch what he's gonna do see how the bike is moving uniformly <laughs> together right yep. and it, that's when one of the light bulbs really hit when i when you showed me that about two years ago i'm like man that's a good setup right there it's an essential and, setup and and i think that was after someone else touched the suspension so um so that's what we want. We do, because before, I wish we would have done it before, because really when you would have done that, it would have kind of done the rocking, right? Yeah. 
So at six threads showing on the preload adjuster, and at the setting we had of seven clicks out, too soft, way too bouncy in the back, throwing it forward. At 19 of 21, way too bouncy, throwing it back. Throwing it back. So where's the eight second buckle, Bill? Because <laughs> you're doing this. Bogner's got it. <laughs> so at that point, now that it's stable, you'll go deeper into the corner before you even initiate because it's not doing this prior to turning. So let's see what you come back with. I'm so excited. All right, so let's go ahead and just head up to the winery. So we'll get a little bit of heat in the tires before we kind of start to get into it too much. It's really crazy how, you know, I mean, I've never really been an understanding of suspension, but the way Dave explains it really is really understandable, you know, so. So it's crazy that I already kind of feel the bike floating in unison so to speak. Much harder suspension. Let's get a little bit on the brakes into this corner. All right. So we're gonna stop up here. So I can already, I can already feel the the um, the bike is moving like this. So uh, I'll go ahead and just pop up behind the Mercedes here. So I've never actually had Dave adjust my suspension when he's at Turtle Rock, but what he said just totally makes sense. Um, you know, to be able to kind of run up here and be able to do a quick run up there and then have him come back and fine tune it. I think this thing is really gonna end up being tuned really, really well. And hopefully the, oh, thank you, sir. Hopefully the rear shock doesn't go past the point of no return, so to speak, where I can get a little bit of spring and a little bit of shock life out of it before we have to replace that rear shock because the rear shock looks like it's gonna be a quick minute to replace, meaning that it's, you know, a little bit of uh, labor wise, so. Definitely stiffer. So I'm definitely feeling the road a lot more. All right. Let's see what Dave thinks here about the kind of first initial ride there. All right, Dave, so uh, it, it, you can definitely feel the bike doing this now, and I, now, I, now I understand this. Um, definitely harder, <laughs> which is... Too hard? Um, no, no, I don't mind it. I don't mind it stiff out on the roads because of how I ride. You know, when you did my adjustment for Thunder Hill, I always kept that adjustment out here on the road. So no, okay. it's not too hard. So, um, but so far so good. I liked it. I liked it, but don't take my word for it. Cause I don't know. I, okay. I can, I, I would have told you this morning it felt good too. 
So what we're looking for was just up the up and down the hill, that kind of evening out in its shape, and it's already starting to even out. Okay. Super shiny gray says too stiff, and the camera may pick up black dots in here, so we do need to pull it back one click. Okay. It is too stiff oh, on yes. damping. Okay. Not spring, and you're already starting to get the sandy beach in just that tiny little run up the hill. Okay. So one out on damping from where we were. So we're going, uh, what were we at? Three, right? We were at two actually. Two, got it. So one, two, three now. Okay. Because we wanted to make sure it wasn't bottoming, so we over down. Got it, okay. So now come around the front. Now there's lots of stripes through here. Yes. Lots of stripes that you can see, but there's a dirty spot right there yep. which is about 10 mil okay. i'm gonna guess that that's mechanical bottom so okay. that will be 130 millimeters of travel okay now in you riding that all now is relatively the same there's a band right here and you got to there so as far as preload goes we have about 15 millimeters left here and here for you to use in a panic situation, but that that was just up and down the hill and okay. you were already getting over seven eighths. And I will say I, I did jab the brakes once a little bit just to get the tire warm thing, but then I was like, wait a minute, hold on, let's not do that, so. Right, so the part there now would be, we know you're gonna ride it faster and some of the decreasing radius corners, you're gonna be on the brakes for longer. Okay. So at that point, if we look at preload here, you are on essentially line number two and a bit. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and add one and a half full turns of preload in. Okay. So one and a half. One and a half. Okay. Now all of that is preventative care. Okay. So that as you get faster and brake harder because your arrival speed is quicker. Yes. The brakes are always there for you. Got it. Now with the geometry set at two lines. Okay. If we find more and more preload is added and you're still getting to bottom, then there's the potential to lower to one line. Okay. Versus taking the forks out, taking the forks apart, putting heavier oil in, blah, blah, blah. Okay. For a quick movement of the fork, because given your weight, it's riding deeper in the stroke. Yes. Then that may be the fix for you with your weight and your ability with this prior to looking at cartridges, inserts, or oil changes. Okay. So at this point, we know we're good here. That final check on rebound, because it was a pass when you left. Okay and it's still a pass now. And with hot ur oil, we're still perfectly balanced. Working together. So what's the tire pressure? Uh, we're cold, 31 together. Okay. Now, given, again, speed and weight combined, Yes. leave it at 31 for the ride home. The next okay. ride you take, yes. especially because it's cold now, yeah. try 34 even. Okay because these are very soft carcass tires and they'll flex and walk a lot. Okay. So if you find you're riding, it's stable, everything's good, but that tread joint is weaving still, Okay. that's actually tire pressure being too low. Got it, okay. So at that point, go up to 34, try it again. The more pressure you add, the more rounder the tire comes, the better the bike steers. Got so it. So there's a win-win. Okay. But for those wondering, well, what does that mean? On the street, you want to gain three PSI from cold. Four, three to four. Four means you're pushing. Okay. Which means you should be going to the track. Yes. So at that point, if you want to assess, that's the mathematics behind it. But weight and ability, or just pure ability, will mandate that tire pressure be a certain number for your skill set. Okay. Otherwise, with a soft carcass tire, you bring it into the corner, it pancakes out. Now you can't steer because you lost the roundness. Okay. The other part is over bumps with very low pressure, it's gonna do that. Okay. And what we don't want, now the bike is balanced, is the tire to kick you because it compresses it's and releases. So now you understand the difference in stability. Once the tire heats up after about 25 minutes, once you get back down to the dam where it tightens yes. up. And that post dam going to winters before the long straights, yes. 
if it rides great, but you get in all those G outs and it start, you feel like you're moving again. Okay. That's tire pressure. So there's another piece of the puzzle you can learn. Yes. Actively when you're riding. And at the track, you can actually you can always tell psi because of tire wear out here it's a little bit harder because yeah. the wear is so minute and of course we're not getting over into that softer area of the tire right. so it's 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 the tire pressure is harder on the street to kind of determine yep. so okay so usually for a soft carcass tire you're 34 to 36 okay tires that are a brick don't flex don't move 32, 33. Got it. Okay. All right. Uh, do you want to retest again with the new settings? Yeah, let's do one more run up the hill. Yep. And then come back, check it, and... Put it back together. Put it back together. Okay. All right, Dave. So I'm, I honestly, like I said, um, you don't really know it's broke until you get it fixed. And then once you get it fixed, you realize how broke it was. And, you know, getting on a new bike to be able to kind of ride it like this. This bike has been very, very easy to get on and just ride pretty fast, right? But now that it's fixed correctly, what a difference, Dave. So, what, all right, so your initial, first initial kind of, on this bike i know the shock was kind of a <laughs> well the, yeah just the rear seeing, seeing you arrive sat like this it's like oh that's bad yeah because you didn't buy a chopper yep so it was bum bias and the first thing i said was you got my my rear i could feel the rear bottoming out completely bottoming out so the part there is now with your skill and weight we found the right setting at three clicks from closed on rebound but how long is that going to last? Yep. 3,000 miles, 2,000 miles? Okay. So every time you decel and roll off, if you feel that nudge, now you've got to take it all apart or drill the tiny inspection hole so you can go straight through it. So so what what Dave's talking is this is the side cover that goes here. So, um, and I think, I think that would have been... Uh, Let's uh, pull this off so yeah, it's yeah. easy to see. But you can see the screw so holes. So the screw there. holes here... So realistically, up, up, up. Like, there we go. So we've got to clip that in and put that about. Nope. Keep uh, there. Right it there. is. Yeah. So somewhere in here is is drilling a hole so we don't have to. I mean, because I'm not going to do. I'm not doing this at the track again. I'm, I'm going to tell you when I see you on the west side in March, there's going to be a hole there. So, um, because I'm not going to tear this all apart again. This just, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense to. And if you do, if you yeah. see the hole, there's nothing wrong with going to the hardware store and buying a grommet. A little grommet or a little plug. To cover it so, up. So, uh, for you guys uh, that are, are watching this, that are, are really into the suspension, you know, your, your, sorry, again, dampening adjustment. In this case, it's damp. Yeah. It's, is right in one there. one screw's doing everything. Nice very hard to see but it's see. right up there. yep so there you go there we go so there's your there's your adjuster right there so we got to get a hole there but outside that uh seems fairly fairly easy now if you're 100 pounds lighter than you everything we just did is all wrong all wrong all wrong so please make sure you understand i'm 6 2 245 pounds with gear on yep. so these adjustments everyone always asks me on my street fighter stuff that's not mine by the way that's stefano's um but everyone always asks me what the settings are settings are always going to vary you guys everything always varies on weight and size and everything like that so please understand that these yeah. settings are for the bigger guys all right so we'll get this thing back together and then we'll finish out this uh final with uh our final thoughts here all right dave well uh thank you again sir You're welcome you are amazing amazing now uh your website i can email you on your website you'll get back to me and you can help me set my bike up remotely so i'm in new york and i want to get some help setting this up now that you know this bike you can get it set up correct 
almost on anywhere in the world doesn't matter so remote tuning available at dave moss i'll link everything down below um if you guys are local you're just starting to ramp up because it doesn't look like it's going to be a very wet winter here or a wet spring here nope. we're mid-february and i think it's rained one day i think we've got maybe one more day day of rain in the next two weeks so i'll be riding um but it looks like uh, you're going to get ready. So uh, hit up Dave if you guys are local and you want the 660 uh, set up. Make sure you hit him up. But uh, you were up here touching a Street Fighter. You were messing with uh, um, the Panigale V4. I mean, you know. It doesn't matter what it is. Yeah, I can tune and, it. Unless it's like a brand, brand, brand new model like the RS660, which now we know. So uh, And also stay tuned because... I've offered up the keys to Dave, so he's going to give his, hopefully he'll get his opinion oh, yeah. on it real soon. Yeah. But um, thank you again, sir. You're I welcome. appreciate everything. Make sure you do the normal. Hit the subscribe button, smash the like button, ring the bell notification, head over to Dave Moss Tuning. I'll link his website. And then, uh, of course, your YouTube channel is just getting off. It's, I'm it's watching crazy. it. It's growing. Yeah. It's growing. So someday I'll be big like, uh, big like Dave, but uh, head over to his so informational if you guys are suspension gurus i just can't tell you how much information this guy produces so head over there but thank until you until next time yep thank you dave we'll see you next video bye guys